My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and this came from the PGM V8 video, which we'll get to. <laughs> Fuck me. Any road, so, uh, some people are saying, I don't understand surely how uh, the H2R would use less fuel at, uh, it basically they were saying it would be normal fuel versus a 1000cc bike that's pretty similar. Uh, in that video I said, the H2R is actually going to use a lot of fuel um, from get-go all the way up. So what I've got here is this is, and I do like stuff like this, even though it's a shit picture, it's a picture from a presentation that Kawasaki did. Uh, I don't know where that presentation is from, it's just a picture of their projector. Now I'm going to try and clean up the image because it's a bit washed out. Um, obviously it's a projector so it's a lot of light and stuff. But I'll try and just clean up the image a bit, but what you can see on there is that you have a graph I think it's torque on this side and then it's power on this side and then it's RPM you know pretty much your standard dyno graph and what's on there is that it has um, the, uh, the torque curve the torque curve of all of them like so and what we've got is we've got the ZX10, which is obviously made by Kawasaki. We've got the H2 and the H2R. And then we look at the power, the power's like this. And then the H2R just goes fucking straight up. <laughs> now we're going to talk more about this. I want to see if I can actually get some numbers from this uh, in the future. See if I can find a source for some actual numbers uh, and Kawasaki numbers, the actual graphs. Um, but as you can see on the, on the get-go that the H2 and the H2R both use have higher power right from the start above the ZX10. So all these three bikes are made by Kawasaki, they're all made at the same time. Um, the engines are very, very similar, as in the core engine, bore stroke, stuff like that. Um, all four cylinders. You can see that the H2 and the H2R immediately make more power and horsepower um, than the ZX10. And the reason why is because they um, they're using more fuel, and if we take the ZX10, so the ZX10 power curve looks something like this. I'm just doing this off what I remember, and then you've got the H2, which basically comes and meets it. So what the H2 has is more power lower down, basically, and its top end is pretty much like the ZX10. But to create more power here and to create more torque, it's just more fuel. That's what the supercharger is doing. I think some people get a bit confused about what supercharging is. Even if it has an impeller like a turbo, what a supercharger is. Right, so the thing with turbos is, is that they basically have an exponential uh, component here of how much energy they can extract. So let's just look at an engine. We've got a piston and a rod. Beautiful, that'll do. And then over here, we have a turbine like this. So to kind of explain where turbo's efficiencies lie and don't, let's just say at 2000 RPM, that fucking plane, 2000 RPM, your engine is producing, I don't know, 20 horsepower. Now you've got to remember that that 20 horsepower, let's just say your engine is 33% efficient. So this is, let's use a different pen. This is 33% efficient. All right, that's the efficiency. Your turbo efficiency might be, let's just stick with the same thing, let's just stick with 33%. Now you might say, oh Matt, there's these graphs that say 80 and 90. No, 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 that's the impeller. <laughs> that's the impeller efficiency of how much of its kinetic energy is it converting to the floor of basically drawing air in and stuff like that. That efficiency is just the turbo section. We're looking at the turbine section of how much of that waste heat is it's extracting. You can actually do the proper calculations by basically knowing the temperature that's going in and the temperature that's coming back out. And that temperature difference will give you how much energy. But anyway, let's just say these are 30%, 33%. So at 2000 RPM, the efficiency of this is 33%, which basically means that out of this 20 horsepower 
there was actually nine, uh, 60 horsepower. The real number is 60 horsepower. That's how much you could theoretically extract out of the fuel if you were doing 100% efficiency. Right? If you were 100% efficient, thermally efficient, mechanically efficient, and blah, 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 no parasitic losses, then there's basically 60 horsepowers worth of fuel in this system. But because it's only 33% efficient, we're only getting 20 horsepower out at 2000 RPM. That's just say if we had, um, you know, perfect stoichiometric ratios, everything was just absolutely perfect. So we've got 60 horsepower, and let's just say that 50% of this number, 50% of this number is waste heat through the exhaust. Right, so that's 50% of, oh, fucking hell. Fifty percent of this, because basically fifty percent would be uh, thirty horsepower. Twenty percent is actually been turned into mechanical horsepower we can measure, and then you're left with what's that? Uh, thirty horsepower plus twenty is fifty horsepower. That extra ten horsepowers worth of energy, if you want to put it that way, is pissed out through the cooling system and so on, just um, friction losses. So 50% of that would be 30 horsepower, and this can only convert 33% of that. So 30, 33% of that, a third of that is 10 horsepower, right? And then that uses that to dump it into the engine. Now obviously you've got, you, you, that's just the turbine, then you've got your 80% efficiency, uh, depending on what speed, at low speed your impeller it's just fallen off its efficiency is 10 percent so even this 10 horsepower your impeller efficiency impeller with the l fire impeller efficiency there it's only 10 percent at this speed right at the 2000 rpm so 10 percent of that is 0 0.1 of a horsepower that's how much power it's using to push that air into this engine at this speed. Right, so moving on, at 10,000 RPM, so at 10,000 RPM, when the engine's really kicking on, and we are into our efficiencies. Now, obviously this efficiency is going to change because it's going to be at 33% now. Lower down the revs, it's not 33%, but we can kind of just ignore that. This is just to get the principle over. So at 10,000 RPM, we're making 150 horsepower, right, well 33% of that, a third of that is 50, so we're making, um, no sorry that's the wrong way around, so this is a third, so that would be what, 450, 450 is in the fuel energy, if we had 100% efficiency, all good. And then, so 50% of this number is pissing out the exhaust. So 50% of that is pissing out, and that would be 50% of that, 20, 225 horsepower. All right, that's how much is pissing out. And then this can do a third of that. A third of 225 is 70, 75, 75 is 150, plus another 75. 75, it's not a good day, 75 horsepower, that's what this can extract, and then let's just say that this isn't, a th uh, your, um, your impeller speeds are now well up, so your, um, what's it called, your impeller, it just says it's doing 80%, so it can do 80% of this, and then that's pushing that into the engine, your impeller would push a lot more in. So at 10,000 RPM, what's 80% of 75? Well, 10% is 7.5. So 7.5 is 14, 15, minus 15 from that, that's 60. So 60 horsepower is what this can basically stick into the air. Now, don't get this confused with it is inserting 60 horsepower, it is inserting 60, it's basically the energy that the impeller has. These numbers are wrong and 33% is optimistic, it's just easy for the numbers to follow. But you can see the difference here, at low RPM you're creating low power, so your waste heat that comes back in 
is going to be low. So that's that one and that one. Yeah? So you can see that's this fuck all. And then when you look at this, when you're creating 150 horsepower like this, your horsepower going in is a hell of it's a it's a, they're a lot closer. So this is an exponential ratio. Basically, you start off shit, and then as the turbo increases, this is the efficiency of the turbine. As the turbine increases, increases speed, and not only that, is it's quite a it's almost a linear relationship with the actual speed of the turbine. So when you actually look at turbo speeds, they might be doing 150,000 RPM. Well, your engine's only doing 10,000. Well, at lower speeds, at 2,000 RPM, your impeller might be doing 5,000 RPM. It's not really that. There isn't that linear relationship there between the engine and the turbine speed. So if you double your um, engine output, it's how much waste heat is coming out. And because this is lightweight and small, a lot of that energy is basically condensed on that turbine wheel. In a sense, you look at it, you've got four cylinders. So an entire litre, if you've got a one litre engine, and you've got this little fucking turbo like this. It's all been basically directed towards that small turbine wheel. So that energy concentration is a shitload. But then you lose it back the other way because that impeller has then got to divvy up that up to be between four cylinders. So it's a balancing act. But where, why do turbos and superchargers, where does this all come from? It comes from this, the fact that we've got shit efficiency and that we're basically trying to recover some of the energy out of our exhaust gases. The difference with a supercharger, going full circle right back to the beginning, the difference with a supercharger is, is a supercharger is geared. It, and if you use an impeller, it has to be basically, you, you up the speed, you have a planetary gearbox or just basically a gear set or something like that. But a supercharger is geared in a linear relationship to the engine, unless it's a twin speed one, and we'll talk about that when we talk about the dick and the balls. But... If the engine RPM is, you know, is 2,000, then a supercharger would have something like, you know, 60,000 RPM, something like that. And when you basically, you know, times that by five, so you're at 10,000 RPM, you times this by five, and you're at, what's that, 300,000 RPM. It's a bit high, but you get what I mean. It's a direct linear relationship between the engine and the, the supercharger, that's what superchargers do. In other words, superchargers give you the boost you want right from the get-go, and they will continue to, it's supply and demand basically, because they're, the two are literally connected, they're literally mated together through gearboxes, belts, chains, whatever. When the engine demands twice the air, the supercharger will give you twice the air, um, and vice versa. With turbos, they are basically, waiting for the engine to do its thing. The engine has to produce a lot of waste heat for it to extract it. If the engine's chundering along and not creating much power at all, then that waste heat, there's not going to be much in that. So it's the disproportion between one and the other. Now, this is where turbo lag is, and like I said, there's ways around that, and we'll go and look in that in, in better detail, basically. But um, the problem with superchargers, full stop, is like, well, this is a no-brainer. Why don't you always go supercharger? Superchargers are being driven by the engine, so any energy, any horsepower that the engine makes over time, um, some of that has been siphoned off, and it can be up to like 10%, 20%. Some of it's been siphoned off to feed the supercharger, because the supercharger is doing work. It is pumping, be it a roots blower, be it a screw, be it an impeller type like the dick and the balls, be whatever. It is basically been, it has to be powered by something. And this is the thing with all these electric superchargers and all the rest of it, is that these motors have to be able to put out that kind of power. And people say, well, it's getting like 2 or 3 PSI boost. It's like 2 or 3 PSI boost, for fuck's sake. It's not that much, you know what I mean? Oh, you might see a 5% horsepower, 10% maybe horsepower increase. It's not worth it. It's not worth the weight and complexity and the cost that it is to carry around to get that little of an increase. You look at the dick and the balls versus a ZX10, or even the, you know, no, the dick and the balls. We'll go the dick and the balls. The H2 is basically designed to, well, we'll go into that. But you look at the power difference. You've got a ZX, a ZX10. Let's just say 200 horsepower. Dick and the balls, 300 horsepower. You have basically increased your power output by 50%. That's not five. That's not six. Fifty. 
and you don't have fucking feel them kind of changes. You know, and that is a supercharger. That is literally robbing the power from the engine to drive that impeller. And do not be under any illusion that these superchargers do not require a lot of power. They talk about top fuel dragsters that produce between eight and 10,000 horsepower. The supercharger requires a thousand horsepower. A thousand horsepower just to basically pump that amount of air. That's a Bugatti Veyron's worth of power just in a supercharger. It is fucking nuts. You see them snap belts and stuff after thir you know, after five seconds. <laughs> That's how much power, and these are broad ass timing belts. These things are fucking huge. You know, and it'll just snap them, fuck them. You know what I mean? That's a belt that you'll have on a Harley for the next 50,000 miles or something. And this thing has just gone fuck off. And not only that is, these are better quality belts. These are pretty much the best belts you can get. Hope that makes sense. Like I say, it's a bit, all over the place the numbers are wrong the numbers are there just to give you an idea i'll actually do some calculations and actually show you the real numbers and see what the losses are and stuff like that but i have to get some i'll probably contact garrett and see what they've what numbers they've got for impeller efficiencies and also turbine efficiencies hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit